Who'd have thought we'd be here last week? And the choices that have been made can't be unmade. And so we come here this morning, and that text resonates. In a way, maybe it didn't last week because it was a little bit further away. We have the power to choose, but choices can be really hard. And sometimes, a lot of times, it's not that easy to make a choice this way or that. So what do we do? I changed tack midweek and wanted to go back a bit. Not to the choices that Jesus made, but maybe what inspired those choices. What gave the strength for those choices? In the text, it's really important for us to unpick some of the stuff that happened in that story. For one thing, the devil, it's called Ha-Satan, which actually means the adversary, the other choice, and it's appealing. And I thought it was really fascinating in that story that at the end of the story, when Ha-Satan leaves, it says, just waiting for a more opportune time. So choices are constant. They never stop. And every little choice we make takes us in a direction. So I wanted to take a step back. And I wanted to read you the beginning of Luke before Jesus is not led into the wilderness because that's a very gentle word. It's actually in the original text, thrust, compelled. Couldn't do anything other than go there. Couldn't do anything else. So I'll read you this, and then let's just briefly think about that. Now, when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove, and a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. You are mine, and you are loved. With you, I am well pleased, and with those words, straight in to the wilderness, to all those temptations, to all those choices, to all those questions about who he was, why he was here, and what he was going to do about it. So I wanted to read a reflection and share with you and just enter into it. Because I think today in this first Sunday of Lent, with all the things that are happening so close to us, but are happening across the world and have been for generations and years, when it comes so close and looks so similar, all of the sudden, it becomes incredibly real. It's no more real than it was last week. These choices, these changes. What else was there to say, really? After he stripped off the clothes that protected him, she had the average life that was waiting to welcome him, left them behind on the shore of the Jordan and waded vulnerable into that water, aligning himself forever with controversy. What else could a parent say to a child at that point when protection wasn't an option, when pride did not begin to cover it? What else was there to say, really? Nothing except, this is my son, the beloved with whom I'm well pleased. 
And so at Jesus' baptism, we are invited to hear God whisper, I love you, boy, into his ear as he came clean in the River Jordan. Transformational power of those three words. I love you. When embraced, they travel with you. They ground you and they send you out. You will never be the same once those words sink in. Jesus, fresh from those words, you are my beloved, is led into the wilderness. He could never go back to who he was before. And if we join him in his baptism, if we join him in hearing those words, you are my beloved, then neither can we. Jesus, in our story, came to the River Jordan, stripped off the clothes that protected him, shed the average life that was waiting to welcome him, left him behind on the shore of the Jordan and waded vulnerable into that water, aligning himself forever with controversy. He will live and die for this new love he's found. He will live and die with the words he heard whispered as he emerged from those waters. I love you, boy. What else could a parent say to a child at that point when protection wasn't an option, when pride didn't even begin to cover it? What else was there to say? Nothing, really. Nothing except, this is my son, the beloved, with whom I'm well pleased. When peace seems naive, when forgiveness is just that one step too far, when love feels hollow. We are called to remember. We are beloved. All God's children are beloved. And it's our job to love each other. So when those hard choices come, and they're coming, Let's stay with Jesus in the wilderness. Stay with him and walk the way with him. Let us pray. Stripped away, God, you stand, you stand exposed before us. Cradling you naked at your birth, we wrapped you up in swaddling bands, enfolded your arrival in angel songs and starshine and mystery. But now, emboldened by your baptism, Jesus, you emerge from the waters. With the trappings torn off, with your gifts thrown open and waiting, with the story of the infant seen in stark contrast to the man, we stand by the bank and wonder, who are you? And what do you want from us? When we see you wet from the water, restless and ready to walk into the wilderness, divested of all pretense, we are the ones who feel vulnerable. Stripped away, God. You stand exposed before us, and we struggle to stand with you. Cleansed and calm, you are almost ready to begin, but there is one thing lacking. And then the sound pierces our sight, and we're momentarily enlightened. 
This, this is my son, the beloved, with whom I'm well pleased. This is the way I choose. Follow me. This is not going to be easy. But what worth its salt ever is. Stripped away of all other claims, this alone remains. Love. Please, God, may we follow where it leads. Amen.